I'm guessing that you're watching this video because you want to know when is the best time to sell your cryptocurrency so you don't get stuck holding a huge bag of coins that become worth pretty much nothing, which has happened historically in the cryptocurrency market. As you know, crypto tends to go through these major bull markets of extreme euphoria and then these serious drawdowns of 80 to 90 percent drawdown. So how do you exit the cryptocurrency market properly? In this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly that. We're going to cover what is an exit strategy? Why do you need an exit strategy? I'm gonna get you to understand the crypto market cycles a little bit. And then I'm gonna show you three different exit strategies that you can use. And then at the very end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to predict the crypto market tops and bottoms. This is taught to me by my partner, who is not somebody that only just talked about it, but he actually bet his wallet this way in the last Bitcoin uh, top market. He predicted it within like $1,000 of the top. So I'm gonna show you exactly how he did that. And he's a guy that's been trading Bitcoin since it was one penny before you could even buy it on exchanges. So there's a wealth of knowledge. And if you'd like that report more in depth on how to actually predict crypto market tops, go on over to at Blue Edge Crypto on Instagram, message us the word top, and we'll send you that written report if you'd like a more in depth full guide on how to accurately predict the tops of the market. Hey, what's up there? My name is Adam Winnig, and we created this channel to help make your trading easy, lucrative, and fun. So if you're interested in cryptocurrencies, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications so you don't miss any other helpful videos. Okay, with all that being said, let's dive into this. Again, I'm going to show you what an exit strategy is. I'm going to show you examples, and then I'm going to also show you how you can get an idea of when the top of the market's coming. So that way you can get an idea of when you should actually exit. Now, an exit strategy is really pretty simple. It's basically just a contingency plan that's executed executed by an investor or trader to basically exit out of a certain asset class. Obviously in this scenario, we're talking about how do you actually exit cryptocurrencies? And it's important if you are an investor or you are a trader in cryptocurrency that you do in fact have an exit strategy. Here's the reason why. Now let's take a look at this. Okay. If we go back to 2017, we saw that we had this massive run up. There's massive amounts of euphoria in the market. People thought that this was never going to end. And what happened? We went through this massive bear market where pretty much everyone just lost all of their money or like 80 something percent of it. If we look at it from top all the way down to bottom, we had like an 84% drawdown in Bitcoin. So that means if you had like $100,000 at the peak and euphoria of this market, now you only had $16,000 yikes not that exciting right so we want to know how can we actually get an exit around the top or somewhere around there so that way we can get into stable coins or get into cash and that way when the bear market comes around we can buy back at these lower price points that's the whole idea behind why you need a cryptocurrency exit strategy because also some of these cryptocurrencies aren't going to be around forever so you want to trade them in order to get ahead in the market right so with that being said i want to give you a better understanding of the crypto market before i show you the strategies and how to predict the tops of it. As you probably know, Bitcoin has a four year halving cycle. If you're unfamiliar, basically every four years, Bitcoin supply is cut in half and that caused an increase in demand. And that's kind of what spurred this market. And if we look at it historically, we can see after a halving, we usually have this massive green year. These are 12 month candles or yearly candles. So we usually have this massive run and then we have a big bear market where price crashes. And then in year three, we kind of have this accumulation phase that happens. And then year four, again, we start getting excitement again, where people start getting into the market and then boom, right after the halving, we have this massive explosion that happens in the market. And we can just see this happen time and time again, where we see this playing out over and over again. Okay. So with that being said, the market also follows, it also follows a psychological cycle, which happens in any market in stocks and real estate, any market where people are basically speculating. We see this where people go from disbelief to hope to optimism, belief through, and then euphoria, like we saw in 2017, and then people got complacent, right? Then we see anxiety, denial, panic. We see anger, depression, right? In these bear markets. And so the markets are built off of fear and greed. They're built off of human emotion. That's what makes price charts so interesting is because it's actually a psychological map of what's happening in the market. And you can see Bitcoin down here below. This was in 2017. Well, what happened? We had the euphoria and it matched up, right? We had the euphoria and then boom, we had this, you know, complete bear market at the bottom. This is when people were depressed. Their money was worth nothing and they're all freaking out, right? Now, with that being said, as you probably know, at this point, the market pretty much follows Bitcoin. So whatever happens with Bitcoin, altcoins will follow. And if we take a look at the 2017 run again, and we look at it, uh, pretty much what happened was Bitcoin hit
hit this all-time high and then a couple weeks later we had altcoins hitting the all-time high and then altcoins crashed right after bitcoin okay now with that all being said it's time to like pull this back and put it into perspective of where we actually are okay at the time of making this video the market cap of all crypto is around 1.5 trillion dollars and if we just look at the gold market for just all gold is is basically store of wealth right it's a 10 trillion dollar market cap and cryptocurrency has use cases way infinitely beyond a 10 trillion dollar market cap so do i think it's going to go to 10 trillion dollars and beyond yes i absolutely think i think it'll actually eventually go to 100 trillion and beyond that but it will go through these boom and bust cycle phases okay so now that you understand a little bit about the uh the market cycles in these four-year cycles let's go ahead and let's actually uh, like start applying this. So how can we actually exit the market? So there's a few different ways that we can exit the market, right? Okay, the first way is the most simplified version, but you can basically just have a target price limit. Let's say that your target price limit was $50,000. You set that in your brokerage account. When it hits $50,000, you sell it, right? So this is the most simplified version, right? Now, with that being said, you have to be somewhat realistic about where can you actually set your price target limits, right? For example, if we're looking at Cardano ADA, which is currently ranked number five in terms of market cap right now, it's a $43 million market cap. So if you're to put your price limit at $100 for Cardano, well, your time frame needs to be a lot, lot bigger, right? Because in order for that to happen, that means that this market has to go from a $43 billion market to a $4.3 trillion market, which is a massive, massive, increase that's an absorbent amount of money coming into the space in order for that to happen so if you are going to just be doing this very simplified version of just putting a target price limit then you have to actually be realistic with how much money needs to flow into the space now number two is a little bit more sophisticated version which is called dollar cost averaging okay if you're not familiar with it well you're maybe familiar with dollar cost averaging in but we're going to talk about dollar cost averaging out so for example dollar cost averaging in would be like as price goes lower you buy more and more of an asset so let's say that we're taking it here price hit an all-time high of 64,000 and let's say it dipped to like 50,000 you bought some here and then at 40,000 you bought some more and then at $30,000 you bought some more this would be considered dollar cost averaging into a position but you can also dollar cost average out of a position and this is what I've done this year I happen to buy uh, Bitcoin basically at its all-time uh, this the low of the bear market around like five thousand dollars and as price went out i started to take profit so as it came up to like here i took some profit as it came up to here i took some profit as it came up to here i took some profit right and i did this to start dollar cost averaging out i didn't want to completely get out of the asset because i don't think anybody should completely get out of the asset but i wanted to play with house money and this is a really important concept to understand is that when you can play with house money let's say that you invested uh, $10,000 in your uh, portfolio has grown to be $50,000. Well, you may want to consider withdrawing your initial principal. Okay. So that way you don't lose any money. You get out, you dollar cost average out till $10,000. And then everything else is just for play money. It's just for, you know, it's, it's house money, right? So this is the idea of dollar cost averaging out. The third strategy is kind of a blend. And I kind of do strategy two and strategy three personally. I dollar cost average out of my positions. And I also have a percentage of my portfolio that I hold on to that I'm never going to sell, right? And then I'm just staking on different platforms to earn passive income, right? Because my goal is to have enough money in crypto that I can just have a, a lot of passive income coming where I never have to even think about money, right? So with that being said, here's a strategy that you could employ. Let's say that you have 40% of your portfolio that you just want to stake on different platforms platforms that you could earn passive income on and you could use this as like a long-term hold this is like maybe you're holding legacy assets like bitcoin and ethereum well maybe these are things that you maybe never want to sell okay so this makes up this portion of your portfolio now you could have another portion of your portfolio maybe 20 percent of it that you'll sell when it hits 2x so let's say that you had ten thousand dollars and went to twenty thousand dollars maybe you'd sell a portion of it right there right you could also have another 20 percent of your portfolio that you sell when it hits a 5x price target and then you could have a 20 percent of your portfolio that you just like to trade so if you want to day trade or anything like that then you could use this so this is another strategy that you could use now let's talk about how do you actually predict the tops of the market again if you'd like a more kind of in-depth guide on how to do this a written guide uh, then go on over to blue edge crypto on instagram just message us the word tops and we'll send you this in a written detailed format but let's go ahead and let's take a look at this so here's 
uh, basically five different ways that you can predict the Bitcoin uh, and crypto market top. So let's take a look at this. First thing is something called Bitcoin dominance. Now, what does this mean? Is it means how dominant is Bitcoin compared to the other altcoins in the market? As you may know, uh, Bitcoin actually goes through these market money cycle flows. So if we just take a look here, this is what kind of happens, right? What happens is people move their cash and they move it into Bitcoin and then they move their Bitcoin into altcoins like big top 10 altcoins and then they move their money into smaller cap altcoins and and then there becomes a crash. And this money cycle just happens over and over and over again. So when we look at Bitcoin dominance, we're saying how dominant is Bitcoin? Like how much money is Bitcoin? So for example, right here, 72%. This basically means that out of all money in the cryptocurrency total market cap, 72% of it is held in Bitcoin. Now, if we look down here, we saw that basically only 39% of all money held in the crypto space was actually held in Bitcoin. Okay. Now this is interesting because we actually just recently had this big sell off, right? Or this big pullback, you know, it's because, you know, not necessarily because, but a trend correlation was because we saw that Bitcoin dominance got really low. And if we look back here at the end of 2017, same thing started to happen. Bitcoin dominance got really low, which means that people started going into altcoins like we saw in this chart. So people went from Bitcoin to altcoins to smaller cap altcoins, and then it crashed, right? So the same sort of thing. So this is something that you can look at and you can see, okay, is Bitcoin dominant? getting really, really low, that could be a sign that maybe we're towards the top of the market. The next thing that you can look at is something called the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. As you know, the thing that moves the markets is fear and greed, okay? This is why people make buying and selling decisions in the markets because fear and greed. Now, there's a famous Warren Buffett quote that you probably heard that says that when people are fearful, this is when you should be greedy. And when people are greedy, this is when you should be fearful. So here you can see the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which basically when you see a really high number. This means people are really greedy. And this means we likely could be towards the top of the market. And basically, if you were to just use this chart alone, you basically sell when it's really greedy and you buy when it's really fearful on this index, you'd have done really, really well just using this really simple little chart that you can find online for free, right? Buy when people are fearful, sell when people are greedy. This is the second way. The third thing that you can take a look at, take a look at what's happening with Bitcoin whales. So people that have more than a thousand Bitcoin, we can see what they're doing. So if we see recently we just had this sell-off that happened with price and we also had a sell-off what happened first was actually we saw Bitcoin whales starting to get rid of their positions, right? And you can see that happening prior to the price actually starting to fall down. So this is another interesting thing that you can look at. But my two favorite ways to actually uh, analyze the market are something called divergence and the other thing called SGA. So let me explain this to you really, really quickly. And if this video has all been helpful, then go ahead, like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications so you don't miss anything else helpful. It also helps the channel, helps us get the word out there about crypto, help educate people about the truth behind crypto. So with that being said, let's take a look at divergence. So what does divergence mean? Okay. Divergence basically means that there is a discrepancy on what's happening on an oscillator, which here you can see the histogram is my oscillator here. You can also use the RSI. You can use stochastic. Um, I'm using a proprietary algorithm, but it pretty much works the exact same way. Okay. A discrepancy in the price chart. So what does that mean? Well, that means that price is moving higher and higher but the histogram or the oscillator is moving lower and lower. Okay. And unlike a lot of algorithms or excuse me, a lot of indicators that are lagging indicators, divergence, a lot of the times can be a leading indicator, which can give you an insight into what's likely to happen with price in the future. So what does this actually mean? Well, all this means is, is that price is moving higher, but the momentum is becoming less and less. Okay. So what this means is when they're moving in opposite directions, there's likely to be some sort of reversal. Okay. So we can see this clearly here and you could have predicted the top here right around $64,000 at this point before this pullback happened. Now you could also have predicted this move up to the upside here. Actually, if you just would have seen this, like we see it going to the opposite way. So this is divergence in the opposite way. We see that the oscillator is going upwards. It's making higher highs, but we see that price is moving downwards, right? So we see that the downwards momentum is losing steam and price is likely to reverse. And that's exactly what we saw happen here in this chart here. Okay. So this is divergence. 
But probably my favorite way to predict market tops and bottoms, the easiest way that I know of is to simply use something called the spiral guide algorithm. If you're not familiar with it, it's because it's a proprietary indicator and algorithm that was put together by my friend, a partner of mine who's been trading Bitcoin since he was a penny. He's a Silicon Valley engineer. He's absolutely brilliant, but this just makes it really, really easy because it just basically turns from green to red. Okay, so just to show you, for example, when it turns green, that's when you should buy. And when it turns red, that's when you should sell. Now, it's not always perfect and you are sure going to have some losing trades, but it has a significant edge. And I can show you the test to prove this. But basically, you can see this green movement. You'd catch it all the way up to here and then you'd get out of the market for a little bit. And then you catch the move all the way up to here and you get out around here. So you wouldn't predict it the very tippy top, but that's unrealistic. But this is just an algorithm that I love using that makes it really simple. And if you're interested, in trying out the algorithm, you can try it for free at our website, blueedgefinancial.com slash crypto. Okay. With that being said, there's, I'm going to point to a couple of videos on our channel here that'll help make your trading easy, lucrative, and fun. So go ahead, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and consider checking out some of the other videos on our channel.